You know what I might do? I might do a little bit of HV content, actual electrical content overview. Something that I really know nothing about, but it's never stopped me before. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Not really, you fucking bellend. See this fella here? That fella there. Zoom out a bit, this shot's terrible. That is a HV ring main unit. It is basically, for you house bashers, a spur. That is all it does. It's literally like a spur on a ring main because that's literally what it is. On the bottom look, cables come in and cables go out like on a ring main. And you see at the back of it, around here, that cable goes to the transformer. That's all it does. It does a little bit of magic that helps keep the lights on. But effectively, the power comes in through a switch, goes out through a switch, and then on those bars in the middle, it tees off to the transformer. That is pretty much all you need to know for now. This is not an in-depth bit. This is just an overview of what the fuck that is. So yeah, that's a HVT or HV ring main unit. I'll put a diagram up it, up it. I'll put a diagram up here of it, yeah, but literally behind that door that I can't undo because I'm not HV qualified, there's a switch for the incoming leg, a switch for the outgoing leg, across the top is a set of buzz bars, and then I've got a switch going off and it goes out the back to that transformer. It's got a unique application when it's used the proper HV ring main in that you can switch it so that you don't really lose power. But I'll have to explain that in a totally separate video with the aid of some crayons. But we're not here for that today. Oh, yes, we are. Here's the in-depth bit. Let me show you what you've got. You've got the HVT ring main unit, which is effectively just a box. Inside that, there is a buzz bar like that. A set of buzz bars for the energy to pass through. On one side of the HVT, you have an incoming cable, and on the other side, you have an outgoing cable. Don't get too tied up on the ins and the outs. And here, you have some sort of switching device that may or may not be protective, like that. So you enable now that you can close this and power those buzz bars up from this end. Or you could close that and power the buzz bars up from that end. Or you could close them both and electricity pass through in either direction. The secret to the T is, it's got a T bit. And coming off there, there will be a device which is probably protective, which will feed some sort of HV load. More often than not, a transformer. Now the clever bit is, if I close this one, like that, I feed the transformer from this end, assuming both legs are live, yeah? If I then close that one and open that one, what I've done there is, I've fed it from this end and had the transformer live. I've paralleled it up by closing both of them and kept the transformer live. Then I've switched this one off. So I've effectively swapped from this side to this side without any effect to the outgoing load. And that is the main secret of a HVT for keeping the lights on everywhere. The thing I want to talk about most today is the transformer around the back. And then that transformer down there that's got the rocket ship on top lock. That is a HV transformer. This particular one's an 11 kV to 400 volts. So high voltage, 11,000 volts to low voltage, 400 volt three phase. I'm just gonna give you an overview here and show you what some of the bits are. For fuck's sake, don't touch them. They're fucking dangerous, but it's nice to know what all the bits are, isn't it? We'll start off on this side, yeah? Anything that's yellow is a lifting point. So you only lift it by the lifting points. I'm not stop pointing, that's a point from here. It doesn't go funny, yeah? Anything that's yellow is a lifting point. That's what they're for. They're for the lifting. Don't start trying to lift it up by these bits, which are called the fins or the radiators, because they'll snap off and you'll get covered with oil. Effectively, inside the big gray box, which I'll move around so you can see it, there is a load of copper windings that do the transformer bit. And that is all you really need is the transformer bit inside. Everything else that's attached to it is to enable its operation and or safe operation. So let's have a look at the other bits, yeah? So in there, big coil of copper, cables go in, cables come out, and it transforms the voltage. Hence the name, transformer. Obviously, a transformer that's this big could probably power, I don't know, your mum's dildo. So within that transformer, there is an insulating medium called oil. Fuck off, train. So within the transformer, there's an insulating medium called oil. It's also used for cooling. And the way it cools is, is it lets the convection from the heat of the coil leave the chamber. And to assist that cooling, you've got these fins or radiators. You'll see up there, like if I move my finger, they're connected via pipes. 
it'll roll in, go through the fins, dissipate the heat and roll back in. And there's one of them on each side lock, just like any other radiator works, like a radiator in your house. And that really is all that's going off on this side. Around this side, we've got a termination box. This is obviously the HV termination side and there's the HV termination box. And within there, will be the HV terminations. I'll just grab a span and take it off and show you. No, no, that'd be stupid, that's a joke. Don't do that, don't ever touch a transformer. This side's a bit more interesting there. Starting at the top, you've got a lid on it. That part coming out, that goes to that funky, funky looking thing there, that's the breather. That's where, when the oil goes up and down, the air is allowed in to fill the gap and it's got that on here which is silica gel which stops any damp air getting in and stops moisture that getting in. There you've got the oil transformer level. So that tells you how much oil's in it. The line obviously indicates where it should be at 15 degrees temperature. So it needs to be above that. That little handle on there that's locked off is the tap changer for adjusting the tappings to get different voltages out the secondary side. That's locked in position because if you move that while it's working, it'll probably blow up, although some are working live. Then you've got the data plate, which tells you all your information. I'll be putting a photo of that up here if this is on YouTube and talking through that. Hello there, it's voice over me. I've never done one of these before, so here we go. Right, looking at the transformer nameplate. First of all, at the top, you've got the manufacturer, Wilson Power Solutions. You've got their full company name, that they're a limited company. Where they were based when the transformers made with their postcode, their country, their telephone number, and their website. Now, obviously, you can find transformers in the wild that don't have websites on because they were made in the 60s. And you can find transformers where the company are long defunct because there are transformers out there made in the 30s that are still satisfactory chugging away. But it's nice to know who they were. Obviously, a Google search sometimes will tell you whether they still exist, whether they've been bought out by another company, which might enable you to get drawings and information on that transformer from whoever they are now. Because quite often, transformer designs last for a number of years. So that's the top part covered all the information about the manufacturer of the transformer. Let's now look at the plate itself. With HV and generally all labeling as a rule, they want to be on a reasonable quality plate. This one's a stainless steel plate and it's been screen printed. Other than that, you can use Gravopoly labels, which are the engraved ones. And the most important thing about it is that it's solid, rigid, and will stay where it is. And it's gonna be legible and it's screwed to the thing. So you'll see this one is a stainless steel plate with four stainless steel screws on it on. Unless that meets a really aggressive chemical, that is not going anywhere. So it's nice to see drawings and labels that are done like that, and that's how they should be done. Okay, starting on the list, I'll work my way down the list on each side. So starting on the left, it says Transformer 2, IEC 60076. That is the BSEN European number that the BS number says that the transformer is made to. It's got a KVA rating, 3,500, can't go into KV on this video, it'll take too long. What we've got here is uh, interesting information. We've got the no load volts at HV and LV. So at HV, it's 11,000 volts on the primary side, and the secondary side is 690 volts, which you might not be expecting. Normally be in the UK, but as I said, this engine has a 690 volt uh, alternator on it, and rather get the alternator replaced and waste the alternator, we've just had a transformer wind to suit. What is then interesting is below we've got the amps. So for 183-ish amps on the HV side, we get nearly 3,000 amps on the LV side. That is why transformers exist for distribution methods and stuff like that, because you get to use those much smaller HV cables that are high voltage that take less amps that you can then ump back up to a LV decent amperage. Next, you've got the temperature rise, which I don't really understand. I don't know what that is. I'm not here to learn anything new myself. I'm just explaining to you what I know. So that's probably some HV shit that I don't understand. If you are a HV engineer, let me know. The max number of load losses in watts and the max load losses in watts is just there. Then we come to the year of manufacturer, which is embossed with a stamp. Because they get these plates made to cover loads of transformers they manufacture, but obviously what changes is the year of manufacture. So there it's 2022. Jumping back up to the top on the right-hand side, the number of phases, which is three, it's more or less always three. There are exceptions, there are polyphase and dual phase transformers, but most will be three. The frequency is 50 hertz, which will always be 50 hertz. Then the interesting bit is the type of cooling is OAN. Not exactly what that means, but I know it means something to do with oil, because it's an oil cooled transformer. The core material, which is the bit of metal that goes through the windings, is cargo steel, Seago steel, something like that. I'm not sure, but it's there if you want to find out. The conductor material within is aluminium. The cooling liquid in litres and kg, it's 1,960 litres, is 1,610 kg. That's because water is viscous and thicker and denser 
so you get more volume for your weight. The conductor, these are all weights now here. The conductor weighs 650 kg. The core and the winding weigh 3.7 tons, 3,760 kg. The total mass of the transformer, which is what you need to know if you're lifting, is 7,370. And the impedance, which again is stamped because that would have been measured after manufacture, is 6.42. Then along the bottom, you've got the serial number 11510, which relates to the specific um, transformer you're dealing with. So if you go back to Wilson Power Solutions, I've got, got transformer 11501. They'll go, oh yeah, we made that for the blah, 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 blah. And they'll tell you something about it if this still exist. Below, you've got the drawing. To the left of the drawing, I don't know what the insulation levels mean. I'm not interested. It's not part of this video and it's too hard to explain anyway. To the right, you've got the vector group, which again is out of the scope of this video. In the middle, you've got a little drawing. You've got the HV and the LV side shown on the drawing. And on the load side, you've got the 7, 6, and 5, and the 4, the 3, and the 2. They're on the um, HV side, because you'll see there's only three terminals. So those are the tap changes at HV. On the LV side, you've got the four terminals, because you've got the three phases and the neutral that's been made. What it says here, below the table, is if when you go to this site, the HV is not very well used, and say you've got positive 5% voltages, Bearing in mind that they have to provide it within the normal plus or minus 5%. If it's plus 5%, you set the tap switch position to 1. That will connect 5 and 4 on the windings, as shown on that drawing. And it will cater for the fact you've got 5% over voltage. If in a few years time they come back and the HV ring is more used, so it's relaxed to around the normal area. They'll then isolate the transformer and change the tap changer to position 3 which will link, link 6 and 3 on the tap change. So the tap changer allows you to cater for difference in voltages, and all of that is detailed there below. At the bottom then, we've got the Wilson um, logo, and we've got the CE mark, and that pretty much is a label, as much as I know, and probably as much as you need to know for when you're looking at stuff. Obviously, if you're ever going to deal with it, always take a picture of a label. Don't get caught out like that. Right, back to the video. You've got a temperature sensor, which goes in up there, look, to temperature it. And then in there, you'll see these little levers. One of those will be the alarm to alarm the controls that it's getting too hot. And then the other one that's in there, one of them, this one will be the alarm and this one will be the trip. So if it gets too hot, it alarms to warn you it's getting too hot. And then the next time it goes around, it hits the trip and fucks off. Then finally down there, you've got the oil tap. That should be a brass tap with a bung in it. And that's how you drain the oil out when you're doing sampling or transformer oil changes, which is something that you keep very, very far away from because that leaks your fault. On this one, there is an LV enclosure on here. So I'll try and get a better view out from this side. That's what they call a feeder pillar. That's attached to the secondary side. Not all transformers have it. It could be another cable box, but in this case, it's got a feeder pillar and in there, there are breakers. Yeah, but the basic transformer is the gray box bit and the fins. That's an additional item that you don't always get. Every transformer is a little bit different and I'll go and show you a little bit different one now. This one's a little bit different. As you can see, it has all the same features as the other one, but it's got a rocket on the top, which I'll talk about in a minute. In this case, the HVT unit, which is the last one in the line, looks any cables coming in, is mounted to the transformer. So those ones are separate look, but this one's attached to it, which doesn't make a massive bit of difference, but that's just how they can come. Some of them won't have any switches attached to it or feeder pillars attached to it. Some of them will have them all separate like that. And some of them, it could all be attached to what they call a package substation, so it's all together. But this one has got it mounted on it. The same fins, but a different orientation. There's a tap at the top of that one for reasons because that rocket's on the top, which I'm gonna cover in a minute. All the lifting points are there. This one's got an LV termination box. So those cables go out to the protected device. There's no protected device in there. And then that is about it. Everything else is the same. There's a tap changer there, the data plate, the lifting point, and what I think are probably probed for temperature sensors if it's not got this bit on the top. So let's do that. That transformer is full of oil and has a breather. That's how that one works. This transformer has the tank on the top. That's called a conservator. That is full of oil, as is that pipe and as is that transformer. So effectively, this transformer is brimmed to the top with oil, and then there's oil in that pipe, oil through that box that's up there, like that Buchholz relay, and then the conservator's got oil in it. I'll show you how that works around the other side. So you can see there, look, that oil tank has got an oil level. So it's up to that level with oil when it's 15 degrees as indicated by the label. And that is so that the transformer's probably so big that when the, it gets hot and the oil expands, it's too big to hold it within itself. 
So as the oil expands, it pushes up that pipe and pushes into conservatory. So on a hot day or high running, the oil level might be lower, and on a cold day it might be sorry, the oil level might be higher, and on a cold day it might be lower. So that's called a conservator. And when you have a conservator, you have one of those there. That is something I mentioned I talked about the other day. That's called a buck holtz relay, which I'm going to go into now. That buck holtz relay up there does two jobs. One, if the oil decides to leak out or get low, and there's such a small amount of oil in it that the pipe lets has no oil in that buck holtz relay has a float in it that sees the oil disappear and it falls down into the void where the oil was and it cuts the transformer off because if the shit continues to leak out the transformer will fucking explode that's obviously quite bad so yeah if the oil leaks out it drains the conservator drains through the buck holtz and drops the transformer off that's all its job is but it's got another little thing it does the transformer under load and faults and all that kind of thing can produce various gases. So when it's producing those various gases, they've got to go somewhere. So what happens is they rise to the top of the oil, they'll go up that pipe and they'll flow through that pipe. If it's a little tiny bit of gas that no one's really worried about and it can find its way to the conservator and harmlessly dissipate into the sky or the ground or whatever, then it doesn't do anything. However, say it's a massive overload and there's a huge gluttonous amount of gas created, that air bubble of gas forms in that pipe, passes through the buck holes, the float drops down and it shuts it off under alarm, under bad things because there shouldn't be a larger volume of gas being produced. So that looks for oil leaving and gas coming out and if it's too much of either of those, it fucking shuts itself down to protect the asset which is the transformer. Then the entire transformer doesn't do a Roman candle, catch fire and explode, which is obviously quite bad. Obviously, if you're a HV person, yeah, you've probably been sick on the floor right now at my shitty description of this transformer. However, that is a little transformer. The one's behind it a little. That one's got a conservator on. All of those things that I've just gone through on that transformer will be on transformers that are as big as that or bigger. Although you might have things like automatic tap chambers, automatic tap changes, more instrumentation and control in it, those basic things that I've just gone through there uh, on every transformer, that's how they work. And literally all it does is, it takes one voltage in and it pumps another voltage out. This particular one is 11,000 volts to 690 because that's got a 690 alternator in it. The ones down there are 11,000 volts to 400 volts, but they can do everything in between. That all depends on how the windings are done. And that basically is an idiot's guy's transformer. And I've been the idiot. You can ask me any questions you've got, but I might not be able to answer them because what I've basically done there is I've told you everything I know about Transformers in, in a video that's about six minutes long. So other than that, I'm completely lost. I'd love to show beneath this, but I might add a drawing on here and, and go over how that works in a bit more detail, but obviously I can't undo that because that's where the magic happens. I like these, I'll show you these. See that bit there? That's a blow-off cover. So if anything goes really, really badly wrong in here and it decides to extract itself and catch fire in that, that little panel there blows off and that's where all the fucking shit comes out. So if you're ever on a site and you're working behind one of them, probably not the safest place for you to be, yeah? You want to fucking move somewhere else because if whatever comes out there comes out into your face, you're going to be having a half day out free with the Undertaker. And uh, what I've done has been testing and working. So I'm going home now. See you later.